Welcome back to League Review, where I'm going to be telling you today why you should play in the Italian Serie A. We're going to be beginning with some strengths and weaknesses about the league. We'll talk about who to use, we'll talk about some creative club ideas, and at the end, I'll tell you how to keep it fun and realistic. So let's get started with those strengths and weaknesses. In my opinion, the two strengths of Serie A is that there's lots of well-known successful teams compared to leagues like France and Spain, and I think they have a really strong national team if you're into doing club and country. When I say the league has a lot of well-known teams, if you compare it to the likes of the French First Division or even the Spanish First Division, if you look down the league, you'll see a lot more big name clubs than some of these other leagues. Sure, the quality at the top might not be as strong, but if you're looking for teams in mid table teams like Fiorentina, Lazio, these are massive teams from the past and I think they're a lot bigger than the ones you will find in France or Spain. The league does have some weaknesses and is a little bit related to the strengths as well. They have very low budgets compared to some of the other major EU leagues. This is due to financial crisis in Italy and the just lack of general growth in their economy. It's made its way through to football and you don't see massive sums of money being spent by Italian teams. This is reflected on FIFA as well. The transfer budgets are a lot smaller than you'll find in Germany, Spain and England. Italy is also going through a bit of a barren spell when it comes to high potential players, especially compared to these other major European nations. You look at Germany, France, England and Spain's national team and you'll see at least one really high potential player in every single one of them. Maybe Musiala at Germany, you got Mbappe in France of course, Bellingham in England and people like Gavi and Pedri in Spain. Well Italy doesn't quite have a player of this level who could be a potential world class player. The league does have some unique features though. It's got now a second division for the first time in FIFA in a long time. It's also a very tactical and historically defensive league. This isn't really something you see a lot in European football. It's a lot of counter-attack or a lot of possession-based play. So having a tactical and defensive league is a little bit of a breath of fresh air in FIFA career mode. You can also try and recreate many of the world conquering tactics and styles of play that originally appeared in Italy over the past 50 years. So that's my ideas of why you should play in Serie A. So who should you use? I've split the league up into three different tiers, the easy, medium and hard clubs. The easiest options, in my opinion, are Juventus. They've got the joint best squad and also they have the most money. They've got a lot of good potential players. They've recently just been licensed back on FIFA. So I think they are probably the easiest choice if you want a Serie A easy mode career mode. You've also got Inter Milan, who have also got the joint best squad with Juventus, and they also do have a big budget. They've signed people like Lukaku recently, and they could be a fun and quite interesting team. They've got some really good players in there as well. Barella in midfield is potentially one of the best midfielders on the entire game. So Inter could be an easy option too. If you want something slightly harder, why not look out for AS Roma? I think they have a good squad, they've got an okay budget, but they do also have some pressure to win the league. It's been a long time since Roma last did it, and now they don't have Totti and De Rossi in their midfield, you'll need to try and rebuild their squad to be even better than it was. Torino is another good medium option club. They were fallen giants, they have a small budget, but they do have lots of high potential players. Another medium option could be Monza. They're newly promoted, but they come in with a big budget and a crazy owner, something that's always fun on FIFA career mode. If you want the hardest possible challenge in Serie A, why not go for Lecce or Cremonese? Two of the teams got, got promoted from Serie B last year. If you want a creator club idea, then I don't think you can look much further than FC Pro Vercelli. Playing in their traditional black and white stripes, Provercelli won seven Serie A titles from 1908 until 1922. They did, however, not win again until they went bankrupt in 2010, where they reformed and rose back to Serie B just two years later. Currently, Pro Vercelli are in Serie C, which is the third division of Italian football. They don't have a legendary striker like they had in the past, where Silvia Piola is actually the all-time leading scorer in Serie A, and he's exactly who their stadium is named after. It fits 5,500 fans inside, so it'd be one of the smallest in Serie A by quite a distance. But of course, named after a striker, you do have the option of trying to find your own youth striker where you can try and break his record throughout your career mode. 
So now you know why you should play in Serie A, you know who to use or who to create, now we're going to talk about keeping it fun and keeping it realistic. Let's begin with fun, where I'm going to be telling you what sort of player ratings you should keep it at if you want the game to still be quite challenging while also being able to have a good team. So maybe you're starting at the bottom of Serie A, you've got a struggling club, maybe you started out as Provocelli or Lecce or even Monza. So you're struggling and you need to keep your player ratings to around a 78 if you want the game to still be difficult. So basically sell any player that gets over this rating or maybe just have one or two above 78. If you're in the mid table, so maybe you're just off the pace for qualifying for Europe, maybe try and make it so you only have a couple of players who are over 82 rated. You can see this in squads like Lazio, like Fiorentina, they do sell their players when they sort of pass this ratio. If you're one of the top clubs, I would say go for 84 or 85. This is sort of the level where players will start to get bought by teams like Man City or Real Madrid or Bayern Munich. So if you can keep a player over this value, go for one or two, but I wouldn't have an entire team of 86 rated players in Serie A. If you want to play in a real stadium, there's actually three to choose for, but they do cover five of the teams in the league. San Siro or the Giuseppe Mezzala is shared by AC Milan and Inter Milan. You've got the Stadio Olimpico, which is in Rome, and it's of course got Roma and Lazio, who both play at this stadium. The Allianz Stadium is a new one back on FIFA, and that's where Juventus play. If you're interested in breaking some records, then why not go for the all-time top scorer one that we mentioned earlier. Silvio Piola has this with his goals for Provocelli and Lazio. If you want to try and beat the most wins, you're going to have to struggle because with your 15 seasons, you're going to have to pick a team that's within 15 of Juventus's 36 and also try and win every single one of them. Most cup wins is possible though because Juventus do only have 14, so if you manage to win the cup in every single season, you will smash this record. The hardest one's probably most appearances where Gianluigi Buffon is currently on 657. Of course, currently he plays in Serie B, so he's not actually getting any appearances towards this record. You could easily re-sign him with a Serie A team though and see if you can stretch him all the way to 700 appearances. If you want to keep your league rules realistic, as I always do recommend people do, then why don't you follow the official league rules? Each year you can sign one non-EU player from any nation. You can also sign another if you also manage to sell one of your non-EU players from your squad to a non-Italian team. Let's say for example you have a Brazilian striker, you want to sign a second non-EU player because you've already signed an Argentinian midfielder. Well, as long as your Brazilian striker goes to a team outside of Italy, you are allowed to sign another one. For example, AS Roma could sign Phil Foden in Season 1. If they also want to sign Mo Salah, they would have to let one of their non-EU players go. Maybe Tammy Abraham, he would have to leave Italy. Each squad can have 25 players with an unlimited amount of non-EU players. This means you could eventually use this one slot every year to make a team where every single player is from Brazil if you really, really wanted to do that. If you are interested in seeing where players are from, I would really recommend you sign players from Scandinavia because there's been a huge amount of Scandinavian influence on the league historically. You just have to look at some of the top scorers of all time or some of the most record appearance holders of all time. You'll see a lot of Swedish and Norwegian players in there. Italy is also one of the few countries where British players go, but they do now count as non-EU players ever since the Brexit vote. Italians and Italian ethnicity South American players, of course, are always going to be a big part of your squad. Even players like Lionel Messi have Italian ethnicity, so you can, as long as you research them, sign basically any Argentinian player. A good amount of North Americans have also played in the league. You just have to look at players like Winston McKenney who are still in there and you can see that there is a decent influence especially with the amount of Italians that headed to the United States at the start of the 1800s. It's also a common stepping stone for other South European leagues. Greece, Turkey, Romania and of course the second division which is Serie B are all big areas where recruitment is found in Serie A. 
If you're interested in the fan culture, I've put some information on that in the description below. But if you are a Serie A fan or you are an Italian, please do let me know how I got on with rating your league. I do think it's one of the top leagues and I really do suggest you give it a go. Hopefully there'll be quite a lot of Serie A content if I manage to get my career mode team promoted. So subscribe if you want to see that, like the video if you enjoyed it and leave any suggestions in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you soon for another video. Cheers and goodbye.